So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So thank you again to join us for this next and very exciting talk that will be given today by Dr. Jose Lipovetsky from uh, CNEA in Bariloche, Argentina. And uh, the talk, as you can see, will be about uh, VION ionizing radiation with a CMOS image sensor. And uh, Dr. José Lipovetsky received his degree in electronic engineering and PhD in engineering at the University of Buenos Aires in 2005 and 2010. Uh, between 2010 and 2013, he worked as a professor at the University of Buenos Aires. Since 2012, he's a research at CONICIT. And since 2014, works at the Centro Atomico Bariloche uh, in, uh, in Bariloche, for sure. And uh, his topics of interest are ionizing radiation effects on CMOS circuits, radiation detection using different integrated devices, and the CMOS uh, image sensor. So thank you again, José, to accept our invitation to give uh, this talk today. And uh, I ask all the participants to do their questions by using the comments uh, and uh, the chat channel in the YouTube. And the questions will be read to José uh, after uh, his talk. So thank you again. And uh, the floor is with you, José, to start uh, your talk. Uh, thanks very much, Ricardo, for the invitation and for organizing uh, these uh, sets of talks, which are always very interesting. Yeah, I hope to make an also an interesting talk today. And I, I will uh, talk about, I will show different um, applications and results of uh, all the work in the, we have done here in the past years using uh, working with, with CMOS image sensors and with uh, ionizing radiation. So I didn't try to do the uh, viewing ionizing radiation using a CMOS camera, which is uh, what we do here. So, and it's the work done by, the, by a lot of uh, colleagues and students in our group. Uh, as um, Ricardo's uh, said I work at the Bariloche Atomic Center, which uh, is owned by the National Commission for Atomic Energy in Argentina. Bariloche is a very beautiful city. We are in the mountains in the in Los Andes. It's a touristic city. We have the darkest uh, ski center in, in South America. But also we have this uh, campus, uh, which is the Bariloche Atomic Center, which is close to the uh, Nahuelhuapi uh, Lake. And it's not only mountains and snow and uh, uh, sightseeing. We have a lot of uh, facilities here. For example, an experimental nuclear reactor, which provides different neutron uh, beams. We have uh, a lot of, I'm sorry. We have a clean room, uh, a lot of uh, in facilities to make material characterizations uh, in different places of the atomic center, uh, an accelerator, and also inside the Bariloche Atomic Center, we have a radiotherapy uh, and medical center owned by the Commission Nacional de Energía Atomica, where uh, we, there, we have access to the radiation facilities and they make a lot of uh, research in uh, medicine related especially to cancer. So, uh, what I'm going to talk is about uh, what happens if you uh, expose a, a CMOS camera and the kind of image sensors that we have in our cell phones uh, to ionizing radiation. So I, I will show you a very simple experiment. It was really one of the first experiments we did uh, some years ago. Here we have um, a CMOS camera, a very simple CMOS camera, which can be read using a a video uh, converter. And if you put a, a ionizing radiation source on top of it, and you, of course, uh, cover it so you won't have any uh, incoming light, visible light, you will see 
as a result of the radiation emitted by the by the source, these small dots, which can be white dots on the uh, on the image, which are the interaction of a particle in this case was an alpha, alpha particle interacting with each pixel. And this is usually called a single event effect. When it happens on a memory, it can cause a bit flip, for example. But in, in our case, we are uh, measuring using the, the camera designed for uh, taking very beautiful pictures with your cell phone or with a surveillance camera. We are measuring the charge deposited by the uh, alpha particle. So, uh, the idea is to show different things which can do uh, taking advantage of taking advantage of this effect. So in this talk, I will first give a small introduction to what uh, SIM machine sensors are, uh, so we can understand what happens to the sensors. Then show how these single event effects can be uh, exploited to uh, make radiation detectors and some applications. And finally, a very short, uh, a couple of slides about how the uh, how we, measuring the single effect if event effects can help us to understand better how the uh, cameras are damaged when you irradiate them with uh, different particles. So, well, CMOS image sensors I, uh, are a, a chip where you have a, an array of pixels and all the electronics needed to read the pixels. And these are two cameras. This is a, a monochrome uh, two megapixel camera. And this is the one of the uh, Raspberry Pi cameras, uh, the 1.3 version of the Raspberry Pi camera. It's a five million pixel sensor. But it's not only uh, an array of pixels. Uh, CMOS image sensors are really very complex uh, system in a chip where you have not only the pixels, but you also have all the logic required to uh, read the pixels, to, gen to generate the timings, to uh, make the configuration of the chip externally. And also you have a, a lot of analog um, parts, for example, to read the data from the chips make a, an amplification, then convert it to digital, uh, and even process in processing inside the chip. So you, for example, can uh, convert them to shape, 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 or whatever you want inside the, the chip, and then transfer it out of the chip. So in the single chip, you have a lot of electronics, which provide you uh, the ability to uh, make the measure, the reading of the chip and the measurement with very, very simply from, from outside, because you just have to send configuration data, the chip will make all the work to read the image, and then it will send you in a, a digital way. But also one of the advantages is that since you have all the amplification and conversion inside the chip, you have a very low, uh, noise for each pixel. So you can make really very accurate measurements of charge deposited in each pixel with these very simple and low cost uh, chips. The very simplified pixel operation and um, like a naive because now most pixels don't work like this is uh, based on the three transistor pixel, which is this one where you have a photodiode built with a, a then an, a, 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 an, an implant, and for example, an N plus implant over the epitaxial layer. And you have three pixels. One of them works as a, as a switch to charge the parasitic capacitance of the pixel to a, an initial value. And we, when you open this transistor, the photocurrent generated in the pixel will discharge the, the, the capacitance during the exposure time. And after this, the exposure time, the capacitance will be discharged to a, with a ramp, which, is, uh, which will be faster as the photon flux is higher. 
And after the, um, the exposure time, which is the time that the, the, the pixel is uh, measuring radiation, you will have a voltage shift, shift. So if you, again, make a reset, you will be able to measure a difference between the final value of this measurement and the next uh, reset value. And this uh, voltage difference is proportional to the number of photons uh, detected at the at the pixel. To make uh, to to be able to um, measure all the pixels in the array, the the operation is usually done sequentially, line by line. Uh, so you first make the reset of the line of one of the of the um, the rows, then reset the other, the other, the other, the other, and after the exposure time, you can read one of the lines. So in in this this kind of uh, pixel uh, construction gives you a roller shutter because the shutter must go from time to time uh, rolling through all the pixels. This uh, rolling shutter gives some problems when the things are moving because, for example, if you have a, a fan using this, you, you take an image of, a, of something moving like a, roll, a, a, a fan. For example, if the, the shutter, the rolling shutter moves in, the, in this vertical direction, you will follow how the, one of the blades of the fan moves and you will have like a, one of these uh, images where the, the image, when the first line of the, the pics of the, of the or image was taken in a different time than the last one. And this is a problem when you, when you take images of things that are moving fast. This is another, this is, this, uh, this is a, a picture I took uh, rolling my camera very fast during the, the take of the image. So here at the beginning, the camera was uh, in a horizontal position position and, and as I was uh, flipping it, uh, you can see that the image uh, makes the, the buildings look like this, they were carved. Instead of that, if you have a global shutter, you can uh, me uh, measure all, you can obtain the data from the image at the same time and ready, make the reading sequentially. And in that, those cases, you have much more complex uh, pixel uh, architectures for example, where well, you have a um, PN junction, where you transfer the charge measured by the pixel, which allow you to make a global shutter. And this more complex, more, most of more modern uh, of at least the, the, the imagers, imagers built in the past uh, years use take advantage of this kind of more complex pixel architectures. And Two other differences between uh, image or technologies are backside or front side illumination, illuminated chips. Um, the most, the oldest kind of uh, image are back front side illumination, which in which uh, you have your um, your chip will be built in a traditional bulk uh, proximus process. You have the light coming from the top, so you, the light will first pass through uh, small lenses, which are uh, put there to focus on the light in the useful part of your pixel, which is the photodiode. Then the light has to pass through all the uh, intermetal uh, oxides, and finally get the silicon when you have the PN junction. The problem with this uh, kind of technology is what, uh, that you cannot, you cannot reduce too much the, the size of the, pix, the pixel pitch and you have uh, more crosstalk and you lose a lot of the area of each, each pixel with the metal lines and devices that you have to put to make the reading. So in most modern technologies, they make a fit chip in which you have all the devices here in the back, then the silicon sensitive part of the area and the light comes from what was the backside of the chip, which was of course thin down. And in this case, you can also see the color filters. These are uh, scanning electron microscope images. So you 
they look different, but you they don't have color, of, of course. And you also usually have uh, these micro lenses to um, focus the light in the best part of the pixel. So uh, after showing how is uh, uh, CMOS image sensor is built, uh, I, I want to show some of the um, applications and how single event uh, occur in this kind of pixels. So this is again the image in which we have a, a sensor which is darkened from light so you don't have any visible photons and these white uh, dots are the interaction for example of an alpha or x-ray particle on the on the detector when uh, when an ionizing particle interacts with the silicon, it generates charge. The, the, the mechanism will be different if you have a charged particle, a photon, and depending on which kind of the energy of the photon. But in most cases, you will have like these clusters of white pixels, of pixels with charge. And for example, here we have two examples irradiating with a, a medicine 241 source where you have very clear these dots are alpha particles and for example when a one of uh, a gamma uh, ray from the source interacts with silicon it generates a compton electron and you can see it the trace of the electron here passing through a lot of pixels as if it were a cloud chamber so the effect of a, a charge interacting with the silicon would, will be to leave a lot of charge which will be detected by the pixel as if it were the charge from a visible photon. And the when a par, uh, when a particle, for example, uh, a heavy particle passes through the active part of the sensor, it will generate a, a lot of charge. It will it, 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 as uh, electron hole pairs, the average amount of charge used in uh, lost to generate an, a pair is 3.6 electron volts. And if, for example, we have a, a, an alpha particle which uh, is has a high stopping power, meaning that it has a very slow, small range in silicon, it will leave a lot of charge. So you will see it as a, a very uh, big uh, dot. And if you measure the charge left in this very thin layer, it will be very, very high. And in case of electrons, uh, beta particles, and so on, they will be lose less charge and usually have longer, uh, this kind of longer uh, clusters. Uh, to better understand how they work, you can uh, make the, uh, the simulation of how the charge is collected in a pixel. And we have... Uh, done this kind of simulation using Ticat Centaurus. And for example, uh, we have modeled how what happens if this kind of uh, front side illumination bulk uh, image sensors when a, a small slow energy photon, for example, 5.5 kilo electron volt X-ray photon is absorbed and what happens if it's absorbed in different places? For example, inside the depletion region or uh, between two pixels or below, for example, the in the, in the bulk, outside of the pitaxel layer. And what you see is that, for example, when uh, the charge is collected inside the epitaxial layer, layer uh, in the middle, in, in, close to the center of the pixels, you can collect all the charge in one single pixel. And if not, the charge is charge is spread among different uh, pixels, as happens with other particles, um, giving you, uh, explaining why in many cases you see these uh, large clusters of, uh, of charge of many pixels. And um, okay, we have studied, we, we, we were first uh, made this nice experiment and uh, said, okay, we have a very cheap sensor 
which has a lot of uh, charge resolution to make the, to, to measure charge generated by ionization particle, ionizing particles. And well, it's excellent to make a, a sensor. So we, we have been trying, after understanding how they work, we have been uh, working on different applications. So in the next part of the, of the talk, I want to uh, show you different applications in which we use uh, the CMOS image sensors as uh, radiation detectors. And the, uh, the idea is why we want to detect uh, ionizing radiation. The, the reason is because uh, radiation is a part of our lives. Um, it's important, for example, to make uh, X-ray images. Um, ionizing radiation is used to treat uh, cancers in radiotherapy, and it's a very efficient way to um, uh, mitigate the the effect of uh, of, uh, of a tumor, and even to uh, 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 make a person healthy, two uh, out of three uh, patients with uh, uh, cancer will have radiotherapy as one of the, their, the treatments. Uh, it's also very important in, uh, um, in space applications because uh, in, in satellites we have a lot of radiation coming from the um, island belts, from the solar radiation and from background degradation with cause a lot of problems with uh, the electronics. And also it's important because it's a source of uh, energy, which does not uh, emit uh, carbon dioxide, which is a, a problem for, because of um, uh, climate uh, changes. So th this kind of defect detector has the two uh, important characteristics, they are pixelated, so we'll take advantage of that. And also they have a very good charge resolution. So one of the first applications we have been working on is on making X-ray spectroscopy, um, measuring the energy of X-rays is very important. It has very, a lot of applications. One of them is uh, X-ray fluorescence in which you, um, you irradiate when I, with an X-ray or a, any ionizing radiation uh, to a material, the material will emit fluorescent X-ray photons, which are like uh, uh, which are characteristics of the material. So a way to analyze how a sample is composed is to use this kind this uh, technique of X-ray fluorescence. We. Uh, the, the idea of measuring the amount of charge left by a, a by an X-ray photon in a CMOS in an image sensor CCD or CMOS is quite old because it's a way to um, make the conversion between voltage and charge in the pixel. But we have we worked on using it as a sensor, and we have been uh, working on the detection of uh, of the X-rays from fluorescence of different materials. Showing that, it, showing that at least up to 15, 20 kilo electron volts, this kind of thick uh, backside illumination sensors are very uh, good for, um, or are at least enable the possibility of doing X-ray spectroscopy. But also since the, pixel, the sensors have very small pixels, they are the, probably the, radiation sensor with the smallest pixel pitch that we have, we can use them as a direct X-ray imaging uh, detectors. So um, we have worked a lot on using these kind of devices as the sensor in which you put your uh, radiation source, the thing you want to make the radiography in the middle, and then instead of a radiographic film, our detector. I'm playing, for example, with the uh, X-ray uh, spectrum with the maximum energy. You, you are able to, for example, see inside uh, a chip in which you can see, for example, very clearly, um, well, the pin, the, the pins, the silicon dye, the border is easily very easy to, to see because the glue 
uh, the proxy you, they use to um, to put the chip, the, the silicon die on the package uh, gives you like this border. And you can see very clearly the wire bonding uh, on the chip. And for example, uh, playing with the energy and making some small um, uh, estimations, you can see, for example, the thickness with a very, very good precision. And with the attenuation of the X-rays, you can confirm if the, the wires are built with uh, gold or aluminum, for example. So you can have information about the composition of your chip. Um, in the, the best resolution we have is like a three a micrometer, which is the kind of uh, resolution you have with some microprobes. But well, if you want to, if you are able to see very small things, you can uh, see very small animals. And this, uh, this here below, we have the images of a new uh, hippocampus uh, discovered here in the Patagonia where we can see the, the, um, the visible image and with the radiation, with an X-ray image, you can see all the small structures inside the, the animal. And the zebra fish is a very important, this is a fish, it's a zebra fish, it's a small fish, which is very important in biology because in biology, uh, it's a very versatile uh, animal model for a lot of research. One of the things the a group here was uh, uh, attempting to do was to study how the, um, the, the the radiation damage on the fish is modulated by the day of the hour of the day uh, in some kind of cells. So we began a Understanding how the, the, the different how the interaction of the radiation with the sea, with the fish uh, happens, and we have been able in first place to make very very good uh, X-ray radiographies of the fish. This is a fish with uh, with a couple of centimeters, and here we have a radiography uh, showing the parts of the fish with micrometer few micrometers resolution. The, I'm sorry, this is in Spanish, but we are uh, we have um, from the images you can see very well the different um, organs of the fish with a very very high detail. And one application in biology uh, is uh, to better see the different parts of the of the animals is to um, add them different kinds of uh, contrast agents, as is done, for example, with, uh, in some uh, medical procedures. So here we can see the different contrasts of gadolinium, europium, and iodine in the, in the fishes, where they absorb uh, preferently the, the, the different uh, elements in different organs, so it, this allows to uh, see different parts of the chip and in the future uh, better localize the dose because where you have uh, low uh, where you have a high absorption they, they you have a higher dose another application uh, we have been working on is on the analysis of quality of a uh, wood in uh, forest industry in south america forest industry is very important and a very known technique is to make to take image, X-ray images of the of a strip of wood, like the the wood is have a, a, an ice cream. But this uh, kind of uh, of strips, which are taken readily from the from the tree, give you information about the history of the tree and the quality of the of the tree uh, wood, which is important for the production. Uh, in the past, they, uh, most radiographies were taken using radio radiographic films or other uh, larger panels, but with a low spatial resolution. 
And using these very high resolution sensors, we're able to even see the cells of the tree, where you can see uh, these are called uh, tracheids. And each part, the, these are the, the cells of the tree with the, where the water pass, passes through to go by capillarity to the upper part of the tree. So this uh, gives new, opportunity in, uh, new opportunities for wood uh, analysis, and we're working with the National uh, Agriculture Technology um, Institute of the country in this, in this application. Finally, uh, we, we, we found that the, the, the resolution in, in those is very, very high. So we, uh, we began, this was a project during the pandemics where we didn't have access to many uh, radiation facilities and the work. So we, we went to work at, at home in many things. And this is one of them. We had uh, the idea is, uh, is it possible to uh, take a very, make a very, very, very cheap dosimeter and very easy to, uh, uh, to get? Um, using one of these sensors. So we took the ESP32 CAM uh, board, which is an embedded system board with a camera. This, uh, it costs like eight or nine dollars only. And the idea is to, was to see if we were able to uh, detect radiation in using it and have a high resolution. And our first work, this is work in progress, we had a, a good resolution, but with the, we have at least some resolution uh, in those, but with the low, uh, dead, with the high date time, because most of the time the, the processor is doing other things. And now we're working on a good optimization using the two cores and direct, direct memory access to uh, measure all the time and have a higher resolution. But the idea is, we expect to finish it and put it on a GitLab. So anyone uh, as an open source project, so anyone can download uh, the, the software and uh, in any place have like a small radiation detector uh, to play with. Another uh, application in which we are working, this is uh, probably uh, longer in time is the use of this kind of detector for the measurement of uh, particles in, in orbit in a satellite. Since we're able to uh, see if the particle which causes the, this white dot is uh, an alpha particle, a proton, a lithium, or something heavier, or just an electron, we expect to make a, a particle counter uh, operating in a satellite board and um, so we to uh, make an instrument to measure the flux of particles based on this kind of detector in a, in a satellite and when uh, for, uh, up to now I, I always spoke about uh, charged particles for example alpha particles uh, or the electrons generated by the X-rays or gamma rays. But one application which is, uh, has some importance is the detection of thermal neutrons. Thermal neutrons are uh, uh, present in, in different uh, techniques to characterize materials, to radiate. Uh, there are uh, radiotherapy experimental techniques and Thermal neutrons in, do not interact too much with silicon, so they do not generate too much charge in silicon. But we wanted to build a, a, a thermal neutron detector, so we added a, a, conversion, a converter layer. A converter layer um, has different uh, isotopes, which have a very high sensitivity uh, or a very high cross-section to trap an electron. And then they generate a secondary particle when they, for example, uh, have a, a fission or, or whatever. And these secondary particles, for example, an electron or an alpha particle can be detected with the sensor. So we receive, we trap the, the neutron here, and then the electron which leaves and goes the right direction 
can be detected and we have like an indirect way to measure the, the to detect the neutron. So we began uh, adding um, oxide, uh, gadolinium oxide nanoparticles on top of a sensor. And this, uh, this is uh, the result of an experiment showing that it works. And with this uh, kind of detector, we reached uh, an efficiency of uh, eleven percent, which is quite quite for a single layer detector. And well, we have a pixelated ter thermal neutron detector. We can use it to make uh, radiographies using neutrons instead of X-rays. When you uh, X-rays are uh, more efficiently absorbed by high uh, weight elements. So the con contrast is usually given, uh, most contrast is observed with uh, heavier elements, as a, in general. And on the contrary, uh, neutrons are better dispersed by low uh, weight elements like, like hydrogen or are trapped by uh, special elements which are uh, important in uh, nuclear industry. So the idea is that we can put a sample uh, before a sensor with a conversion layer in front of thermal neutrons and uh, take advantage of this converter layer to make an, obtain an image, an, an, a radiography, but instead of X-rays with thermal neutrons. So here we have one of the first um, neutron imaging uh, radiography obtained uh, by us. And we, with these very small pixels, we have been able to get at least uh, something like 15 micrometer of resolution, which is quite good for a, a neutrography. Another way to make a neutrography is uh, to irradiate something which is called um, activation uh, transfer layer, built for example uh, with indium. Uh, in this case, then uh, you can put your activation layer in a very, 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 very uh, radioactive environment like a nuclear reactor. So you can have the neutrons coming from the nuclear reactor. You can take uh, the radiography of a very um, radioactive sample and the information of where the neutrons are trapped uh, are where have passed is uh, left on this indium foil. And then you can point, put the indium foil on top of a CMOS sensor to see the radiation emitted by the disactivation layer. So um, playing also with the energy of the neutrons, you can obtain complex images where you can see uh, for example, different materials of interest for in, uh, in nuclear uh, industry. And the, this would be, might be uh, a, a, an imaging technique uh, suitable for um, 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 looking at a nuclear um, element for a nuclear um, fuel elements. Okay, and now finally, um, I wanted to show how uh, the um, looking at the single event effects can help to understand uh, damage in the sensors. The, the sensors, uh, when, when you radiate, expose the sensor to, uh, to radiation, you can have different kinds of, of effects. The first one is total ionizing dose, which uh, causes an increase in the leakage current of the pixels. So if you have, like this is a dark image of a sensor before irradiation and after giving uh, an amount of, of dose, you will, the, the, the amount of current in each pixel increases. And this can be observed if you make a, a histogram of the, of the dark current mm -hmm. of each pixel you will see after irradiation that the, the distribution moves to higher currents and also an increase in the, in the the variability of these currents. 
and this is caused be, this is uh, because of the trapping of the um, the generation of interface uh, traps and defects on the shallow trench isolations or the thick oxides, which are known to be the usual source of damage in most uh, uh, integrated circuits. But in this case, this is not because of the trapping of electrical charge in the, th in the, in the STI or in the oxide, but, but because of the generation of defects in the interface, also known, known as interface traps. But another problem which happens is the uh, displacement damage, which is observed as small blinking dots on, uh, on a sensor. Here we have uh, an image, for example, of the uh, space crew, SpaceX crew one uh, arrive, first arrival to the uh, International Space Station. It was transmitted uh, via, via uh, on YouTube, so you could take a, a lot of people were following this. And when the 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 space the crew the, the dragon uh, was uh, in the daylight the part of the orbit you can see it very very nice here but when the, it got to the other side of the, the of the world you didn't have the, the the light of the sun so the the image was much uh, darker and here you, you can see these are the lights of the of the the spacecraft but the others are like a small of pixels which are like, they look like blinking. And this is a characteristic a kind of effect, which is called displacement damage. Here are uh, two more uh, examples. This is one uh, in, um, in an airplane, which has a, a camera looking down. Uh, during the night, you don't expect to see anything, but you, you have these pixels, which are like turned on all the time, instead of having a completely uh, dark image and here for example in a radiotherapy uh, facility where you have high energy neutrons you also has you can also see a very very damaged um, uh, camera this is the dome where you they can see that if everything goes fine inside and using this kind of uh, looking at the camera you can even see how a pixel breaks for example here we have a camera this is just a small part a couple of pixels where you can see that before the events the camera with not exposed to light looked very uh very dark with very this here where i plot the, the the intensity of the different pixels uh, with time and in some moment, you see like a very bright dot with most of many of the pixels with a very high intensity. But after this event, which was uh, caused by an alpha particle, you can see one of them, which is permanent, permanently broken. Not all the alpha particle interactions make this kind of damage but some of them do and this can be explained by the uh, one of the um, when the alpha particle hits a silicon atom it can take it away from its place and you, and this uh, and then have like a, a shower of uh, defects which create a cluster of defects and it, these defects behave as um, generation centers where you have an increase in the, where they, where they, they generate electron hole pairs which generate a, a dark current on your pixel. These uh, pixels, this uh, kind of defect, defect has a, a variation with time, many times, uh, reported as a telegraphic random noise signal, which uh, explains why we see like a blinking dot in the YouTube uh, transmission. 
And if you make a histogram, instead of a shift of the uh, Gaussian distribution, you see like, well, this small number of uh, pixels with a very high amount of dark currents. So as a um, summary, the, the two kinds of, of effects are total enhancing dose and displacement and damage. Total enhancing dose causes a, a, a like a uniform increase in the in the dark current, also with an increase in the variation, and displacement damage causes the breaking of only few pixels. Well, if we want to use a detector as a, a CMOS image sensor as a detector, we will have to deal with this kind of radiation. Uh, it have different uh, strategies to mitigate this. The first one is uh, you can replace it, replace it because it's very cheap, so it's not so, such a big problem. But also make some processing to the image, like subtracting the dark current. Uh, many image sensors have a defect pixel cancellation. So if they find one pixel, which is all it is turned on, and your clusters have more than one pixel, you will uh, you can use take advantage of this uh, in chip uh, characteristic to uh, just uh, remove the, the problems. Or you can take like an image and identify which pixels are broken and ignore them as you would make, for example, with a Medipix uh, pixelated detector, by, which is built by CERN and, and a group of students. So um, to finish my talk, I, I just wanted to uh, show different uh, applications of a very low cost chip. Uh, as a CMOS image sensor, which can be uh, cost from a few dollars to tens of dollars. They have the advantage of having the very, very small pitch, pixel pitch, so uh, they can be used to uh, obtain radiographies with a very, very, very high spatial resolution, but also uh, they can be used to make spectroscopy and with the addition of uh, thermal neutron conversion layers or, or um, the activation layers, you can obtain also images using not only X-rays, but also with um, thermal neutrons. So uh, thanks very much for um, joining to this uh, presentation. And thanks very much, uh, Ricardo, for your invitation. So thank you, Jose. Very interesting talk. So um, we have some questions here. So uh, first by João Henrique Ribeiro Figueiredo. So very interesting talk. In application number three, you showed us that it's possible to analyze wood structures. Do you consider or know of some work using this kind of sensor to study foliage disease? No, I would, not before, but uh, it would be worth trying. Uh, no, there is a continuation. We, we should try it. Maybe if you want to. Uh, um, OK. There is uh, a continuation. It would be nice to make a test. Maybe if you want to uh, get in contact, um, we might, uh, might try and uh, obtain some images and we'll see what you see. Uh, we have not worked with, um, with this kind of diseases, but uh, I think that we should be able to, do, to, to see something. So thanks very much. Yeah, it's, uh, there is a continuation in his oh. questions. You go mild dew in grape wines. They may be very, they may be some applications in IoT for agriculture, in preemptive diagnosing. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, our idea is to build a low cost portable system to obtain the 
uh, radiograph uh, the image, the X-ray images in field. So uh, I don't know. I wouldn't leave uh, something when an X-ray like uh, alone in the in the in a uh, without the person. But uh, probably it would be useful as a portable instrument to make to the uh, to the forest to the, to the production site and obtain images or information from your samples. Um, the difference from uh, nowadays, they, they 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 you need a very uh, large facility with an X-ray source very very away from the sensor, so from the from the film, so you can uh, have a good. Um, um, to have a very good parallelage uh, with the X-rays on the on your, on your sample, and the idea is that we can make it very small and you can bring it to the to the production site. But I don't know if that, that it could be used I, like an IoT uh, device because I, I wouldn't leave it alone on the on the forest or in the on the country um, because it has a an X-ray source, a radioactive source, and for safety reasons, you, you you want somebody to be close to it and to make sure that everything goes fine. But it would be great to to make a try of new applications, of course. So thank you very much. Thank you. You can talk with the wineries in Mendoza too, or yeah. in Salta. Yes. We have the, um, uh, the EAMTA in La Rioja, which also has very good wines recently. Yeah. So another question by Israel Corin from mm. University of Massachusetts in USA. Did you experience, did you experience uh, SUs in the ancillary circuit around the pixel array? It's a very good question. We... Uh, don't check for SEUs in the auxiliary circuit. So uh, the most sensitive part is the pixel array because we measure charge. But when we um, have heavy ions, uh, I think we, we should have, for, for, with alphas, we should have in that kind of technology. But it uh, we don't check for them. So probably they happen. Uh, we just couldn't be able to obtain an image and then had to be another. But this this happens. It didn't happen too frequently. Uh, but the, the the answer is we don't check for SEUs in the pixel array. By but in most of the the publications, well, it, they, they say that it, the the most important effect is is expected on the on the pixels because they have the most the most sensitive to charge. Um, probably in space we will have to um, write uh, very frequently the the registers because I think we will have there a lot of SEOs. So another question is still by Israel. Mm -hmm. What is the smallest charge that will destroy a pixel? Hmm. Well. Uh... The, it, it's for for the uh, the dose. It will be uh, for the total enhancing dose. You need like a very large number of uh, of events. Um, but for single event effects, uh, what is most important is the um, non uh, the non ionizing energy loss, which has to do with the. Um, uh, the the weight of your ion and the energy, and especially with the weight, the the, the heaviest the ion, the, it has a higher probability to causing uh, a, a displacement damage. So uh, usually you don't see displacement damage with uh, electrons, so it's uh, it's it has a low probability. It increases with the, when you have, for example, the, an alpha particle or a, a lithium, like in our. Uh, I haven't show it here, but in some cases we um, we we use uh, boron in the converter layer 
or we also found a thermal neutron damage caused by the boron in the BPSG layer of your chip, uh, of all chips. In that cases, uh, when we made some calculations and stream simulations, uh, it looked, for example, that the, the lithium causes uh, most of the damage, the alpha particles a little, a little bit less, and uh, lighter uh, electrons, uh, the effect is negligible compared to the other, of course. Um, so uh, it will depend not not so much on the charge, but on the on the the kind of particle. But this will depend also on uh, which kind of uh, which node of technology you are using. Uh, the, the, the displacement damage happens in silicon, so. Uh, the technology would know will uh, will give you like you will have a, a, a pixel with a larger volume, so you have a most it will be most have a higher probability of having a, a defect on a single pixel, and also modern uh, devices which BSI are very thin, so you have less silicon, so it decreases the number uh, of events. But the the technology node uh, will not. Uh, for displacement damage um, will not be so important. You, 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 it's not like the SEUs where you have like a three scope. It will always happen because it's a problem in the silicon. Okay. Well, I see no more questions here in the, in the chat. If somebody still have a question, please do it uh, quickly. Um, so I have uh, just one. Uh, so, um, uh, which experiment you have already done uh, by sending any chip to the space? Well, uh, we're on these kind of sensors. We have not yet sent them to space because we are working on the on the board. We expect them to put them on a, a board on a. a and a, and a board which is called LaboSat, which is uh, like a satellite, a, sat a, a laboratory on a satellite, uh, which is a program here in Argentina. We uh, sent different kinds of devices, which were uh, MOSFET dosimeters and backside, uh, I'm sorry, fully depleted uh, SOI uh, dosimeters. And we received some information from them and we have some uh, measurement of those in the satellites. But we have not sent this kind of devices yet. Okay. So thank you very much, Jose, for a very interesting talk. So, um, and uh, before uh, closing Th the session. Thanks very much, Ricardo. Bye. Thanks very much.